while they already have, you know, a significantly larger cluster than anyone else and Mark Zuckerberg mm. and OpenAI, all these other people have said, hey, we're going to build clusters that are bigger than Colossus One and we're going to try to have them online in 2026. None of mm. them have mentioned the fact that by the time they finish those clusters, Colossus <laughs> Two will already be operational and it will be even a significantly larger coherent cluster than any of those projects. Yeah, this is the topic that I really look out to get you to give us advice on your so good, good at this kind of stuff, explaining XAI, Colossus, OpenAI, anything AI, anything Robotaxi, anything bot, you're very good at it. So there's a lot of, uh, it's a race is happening. This is new uh, report saying XAI is investing upwards of $40 billion at its Colossus site to train Grok, 208 Tesla mega packs worth 190 million. You need that to power the supercomputer, Colossus 1, and even more will be planned for Colossus 2. They're building a 500-acre solar farm near the site. And look at this. Construction begins in September. This is a, uh, a news report by this uh, local news uh, video uh, company, cam a TV company. So let's watch it. For the first time, we get inside XAI's Colossus One facility in South Memphis, a facility that much of the community has been concerned about. Action News 5's Joe Birch took the tour and shares what he saw both inside and outside. So for the very first time since Elon Musk landed in Memphis, we got inside XAI, Colossus, the world's largest supercomputer. Now, they didn't allow us to bring our camera in, but we did get a tour that would delight computer nerds to the max. Uh, we can show you, however, though, some of the elements of outside XAI, outside Colossus. That's got cooling tower now under construction. That's part of the structure that will cool water that will come from MLG and W, and it'll be sewer water that'll be reprocessed and then used to cool the computers inside Colossus. Over here, we have one of two substations for MLG and W built by XAI that ultimately are designed to take away the turbines that have caused so much controversy here in Memphis. We're going to do the right thing whether people are watching or not, and we've done that, and we've proven that to be the case, whether it's the gray water plant that we've built just north of here, bringing in the Tesla mega packs to add the resiliency um, and to be able to isolate ourselves during the demand response event, or you know, going back and giving back to the schools that we've been doing you know, for the past couple of months um, and, and, and cleaning up the community, really. Um, we just want to be good partners. XAI says currently 208 Tesla mega packs are in use right here on site at XAI, the Colossus supercomputer. And they use these to smooth the transmission of power to the supercomputer itself, to Colossus. It's a fascinating journey inside the world's largest supercomputer. Mm, that was good. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, obviously not a lot of new information that he shared there for those of us who have been following this closely, but everything that he said was pretty accurate. Uh, you know, you have to chuckle at the framing that the first host said that, you know, many of the people in the community have been concerned about it. And I'm sure there are many people in the community that have been concerned about it, but there's also going to be many people in the community who are excited about it, uh, especially since they've been able to get construction jobs and all sorts of things going on there. Uh, and this is one of the most important construction projects and just ambitious compute cluster projects that we have ever undertaken. Um, that Colossus One supercomputer, when it came online, took the title of the largest coherent compute cluster for AI in existence. I believe it still holds that title. Um, and then of course they're not stopping. There's gonna be Colossus 2, which is going to be even bigger. Uh, so like currently Colossus 1 is well over 200,000 GPUs that are all networked <clears throat> together as one big unified AI brain. Um, and the next one for Colossus 2, Elon has said he'd like to get up to a million mm. GPUs connected together. Uh, and that's gonna be significantly more coherent compute than Colossus One because those are going to be more powerful GPUs as well. So it's going to be more GPUs and then they're going to be better, more powerful GPUs to begin with. Um, and so it's going to be pretty exciting. I do love to see that, you know, XAI is trying to be a good partner to the community. And I think one of the things that a lot of people um, would be concerned about on a project like this 
is that you know these AI compute clusters are very power hungry, and you could be concerned that well, this thing that's going to use so much power is that going to affect my ability to get power at my house um, or the prices that I pay there uh, for electricity as well. And having these huge banks of mega packs really, really helps with not only giving good high quality power to the computers with the response times they need, like it's technically something that the supercompute cluster itself needs in order to operate just period. But then it has the added benefit that if they have enough extra storage there with those mega packs that they can do what's called, you know, load smoothing or load shaving for, for peaks, uh, where if there's some sort of demand event going on there in Memphis, a heat wave or, you know, something to that effect that, the cluster can actually disconnect from the grid and reduce the overall load that the whole grid is undergoing. And so the mm -hmm. community doesn't necessarily have to be exposed to the risk of having this, you know, high power application uh, anytime that the grid there is under further stress. And so it helps really just to make this an easy thing for everyone to do. Um, obviously they've been trying to get these substations put in so that they could get off of those natural gas portable generators that they were running as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. They put them in in very, very fast time as far as, you know, what these things usually take to install and get operational. Um, and you know, that was always the plan. They will probably bring some back as they bring Colossus 2 online, I would anticipate um, ahead of being able to, because I think the substations that are all uh, coming online now are just to power the existing Colossus 1. Uh, I think the substations that are going to be needed to power that more powerful Colossus 2 cluster are still in the early phases. So this is kind of going to be an ongoing rolling um build out of infrastructure in order to support this thing. And all of this, you know, is in service of XAI being able to catch up with the leading models from both OpenAI and Google, uh, all the other frontier labs that are out there as well. And while they already have, you know, a significantly larger cluster than anyone else and Mark Zuckerberg, uh, and OpenAI, all these other people have said, hey, we're going to build clusters that are bigger than Colossus 1, and we're going to try to have them online in 2026. None of mm -hmm. them have mentioned the fact that by the time they finish those clusters, Colossus <laughs> 2 will already be operational, and it will be even a significantly larger coherent cluster than any of those projects. Um, and so Tesla is, or not Tesla, XAI and Elon are already ahead of the competition on cluster size, they are going to be able to maintain that lead. Um, and so while they're coming from behind when it comes to algorithms and the models themselves, they've already caught up to the forefront. And hopefully with this extra resource of all this uh, additional compute, they'll actually be able to accelerate and move into the lead decisively in a sustainable way. Because right now they're all kind of, you know, one will come out and it'll be a little bit better than the other ones. And, you know, a few weeks later, then another one will come out and beat it. Um, but that may be something that with these resources, XAI is finally this able is to it. break out of. Man, Hans, you know so much. <laughs> it's unbelievable what you know and what you just educated us on. I really, really appreciate you there. I wanted to ask you about the solar farm, though. So they're building a 500-acre solar farm near the site. Could be a proof of concept, right? It could be... I yeah, mean, that, I wonder who's... Yeah. Mm. That is going to be uh, an increasingly important part of how these big data centers get powered in the future. Uh, that 500-acre size is mm -hmm. going to be a relatively small overall fraction of the power that's supplied to Colossus 1 and Colossus 2, but it is a good first step. And just right now, the way that the market overall is structured, I think natural gas is in a position to capture most mm. of the incremental demand for electricity in the United States that is coming from these AI data centers. Um, but we're going to start running 
low on our ability to meet that incremental demand with those natural gas, gas turbine generators sometime in the later part of this decade, you know, maybe 2027, 2028, 2029, somewhere in there, if current trends hold on how all this stuff is playing out. Um, and then really the next big thing that will um, fill in the gap after that is probably going to be solar and and then batteries are already i think going to be an important part of these deployments um just for the exact same reasons that i mentioned earlier with why tesla or xai has put these tesla mega packs there with colossus one all of the compute clusters can benefit from that it helps to technically be able to provide power to those clusters smooth out the relationship with the utility provider that you have um and yeah that's just gonna gonna continue to be a dynamic that is true really across a whole number of different players so like tesla's gonna sell quite a few mega packs just dedicated to this one use case and not yeah. just to xai to lots of other people as well um but then yeah. when you have that then it also becomes easier to incrementally add solar because having the solar mega packs yeah. It really makes having the yeah, the Isn't that brilliant? Solar. Yeah. I was gonna ask you that, whether or not this is it. Like this this use case for Colossus for XAI is gonna show the world mm -hmm. that this is what's required for all data centers as they create them. And it sounds like you're you're agreeing with that. So Yeah, it, it'll uh, be a huge portion of that. You know, everything's gonna be in competition. Sure. Big nuclear reactors are gonna be a portion of the mix. There is hopefully at some point we've got some fusion reactors in the mix. Um, hopefully no coal, but yeah, I think that solar and batteries, natural gas and nuclear are all going to be part of the overall pie that it takes as, and everyone's going to have their own investments and their own strategies, uh, and their own shots on goal at powering these things. Um, so we'll see, we'll see all of them, but yeah, I, like the long-term future, I really do think belongs to solar and batteries because of the speed with which the price is falling on both the mm. solar cells themselves and the batteries that, you know, as we unlock these big use cases of demand for mega packs, then we aggressively are pushing down the price of these LFP cells um, down the, the, cur the cost curve for Wright's law. And the cheaper that the batteries get, then it's like, you have a double whammy of how much cheaper that makes installing solar overall since you do need the the batteries but they they're useful for so much more mm. than just leveling out the the solar power that you get yeah i think what you just taught me just now what just made me realize this is that there's multiple benefits of the mega packs for the data centers one is the load balancing from the the local utility uh but also it can now be attached solar farms to it. So then it becomes this obvious thing to do. No, don't just use it for one use case, use it for multiple. Um, so let's talk Tesla. Tesla's Giga Texas Cortex 2 is not being left out. This is Joe Techmar again. He takes these videos and spy shots all the time. And he found Giga Texas Cortex 2 facility. It's under construction right now. There's 10 large green painted transformers were delivered to the site, temporarily staged on the east side of the cathode plant seems to be hinting this facility will require a lot of electrical power for its operation. 10 transformers being delivered here to the site. So this is this site here is developing fast. Um, this is the actual Giga, this is Giga Texas Coloss, sorry, uh, Cortex 2. Cortex 2. Do you, have you heard, is it like even bigger than Colossus uh, 2, you um, know, which is bigger? So it's definitely not bigger than Colossus 2, and my understanding is it's not planned to be bigger than Colossus 2, but uh, it is bigger than, yeah, Colossus 1. And so that it, it's pretty impressive that Elon is following up his investments with XAI with such large investments also for mm -hmm. Tesla. And um, I think the, you know, this was one of the things you know, they plan to have over 350,000 GPUs installed here. A portion of those are going to be whatever, you know, either AI4, AI5, or AI6 um, computers that are networked together in these data center racks instead of being put in the cars. 
because that is a big part of their overall validation process. And it's a big part of their overall training process right now too, that they're doing more and more training on data that is, you know, generated by these car level, you know, AI4, AI5, AI6 computers in the data center. But a big portion of that 350,000 is going to be NVIDIA GPUs. And Jensen is able to make them in quantities that are more than enough to supply what Elon wants at prices that Elon is willing to pay. Um, and it's easier and faster to work with those than to scale up Dojo faster or harder than they have been. They're still going to use Dojo. Uh, but in the overall trade-off between Dojo and NVIDIA GPUs, there's definitely a big place for scaling up with NVIDIA. And uh, so that's going to be you know, a big portion of Cortex-2. And that alone uh, is going to rival a lot of the other biggest hyperscalers and AI labs in terms of unified training compute. So it, it will definitely be like a top five cluster. Okay. All dedicated just to Tesla, just to training, FSD, mm -hmm. RoboTaxi, and then the Optimus robot. And, um, you know, I think that validation piece that Elon has been talking about with the convergence of AI6 to become part of the actual dojo architecture is going to become increasingly important. I think this validation piece is one of the big bottlenecks right now already with RoboTaxi, and I think it's going to be an even bigger bottleneck once we start getting very, very serious about Optimus robot training. And so Cortex-2 is going to be an incredibly pivotal mm -hmm. part of solving the Optimus robot problem and uh yeah it, its role as in eliminating training bottlenecks is going to be a strategic competitive advantage for tesla relative to anyone else in humanoid robots